Hello, my name is Guillaume, and I'm in Easy's master's degree in Valenciennes. Welcome to my presentation of the Invisage quantum film image sensors. First, I will introduce the imagery situation and technical information about image sensors, and put into context the role of quantum film. Image sensors have been involved into our day-to-day -day life for 40 years, in various areas from the medical sector to the nuclear domain, including the constantly growing and evolving field of multimedia. All the capture devices implement electronic sensors. Frequently used in ever more new applications, they are also increasingly choosing to replace the traditional celluloid film, digital techniques implying much efficiency, such as great improvements in rush management or even in the costs of the workflows. Digital sensors are divided in two main architecture categories. CCD sensors create pictures with less noise, have a better sensitivity, dynamic range and uniformity, while CMOS are cheaper to implement, consumes less electricity and needs less time than CCD to capture a whole frame. CMOS are little by little supplanting CCD because the technology benefits from new progress that fills its gaps. Last year, the Californian company Invisage presented a proprietary type of material, the quantum film. Here is how it could help making better imaging being incorporated in CMOS. An image sensor works through three different stages. The first one consists in optoelectronic conversion. In a photo element, photons are converted into charges. Then the charges are measured and turned into voltage. Finally, the signal outputs into eventual post-processing, rendering and recording steps. In most current devices, such as smartphones, digital cameras such as the Arri Alexa, CMOS sensors are used. It is, like the CCD, a technology for constructing integrated circuits. In the case of image sensor, the grid is composed by an array of active pixels. A pixel makes the optoelectronic conversion with a photoreceptor and converts it into voltage and amplifies. We call it the photocircuitry. The latter implements basically one transistor that acts as a switch that precharges the photodiode to a predeterminated voltage. Currently, silicon photodiodes are used as photoreceptors in CMOS sensors. A chemical junction is created in the silicon. A part of the photodiode is doped negatively and the other positively, with ions. Incident photons boost the energy level and the junction stores electrons. The quantum film sensor proposes to replace silicon by a proprietary material which uses quantum dots. They are nanoparticles of semiconductors. The nanoparticles vary in diameter between 1 to 10 nanometer. Through its properties, the quantum film outdoes the CMOS silicon sensor. Here is how. Image sensor sensitivity depends on the one hand on the size of the photosensitive area. I mean, the bigger the pixel, the more photons it can collect. And on the other hand, the efficiency of the photoelectric conversion, known as quantum efficiency. Quantum efficiency is affected by the design of the pixel, but also by the wavelengths of light. Photons create pairs of electron holes if their energy is sufficient. This is the incident optical power and the absorbed optical power in watts, and here is his photo energy in electrovolts multiplied by t in seconds. Ultraviolets are absorbed by layers that separate from the silicon substract. The IS wavelengths can't reach the silicon due to the distance between the electron creation zone and capture zone. The quantum film enables a considerable gain in quantum efficiency, allowing to make sensors thinner. Then, the dynamic range refers to the ratio of the device output at its saturation to noise level. A high dynamic range preserves detail in both shadow and highlight simultaneously. So low noise and a large charge capacity are essential to delivering great dynamic range. A pixel is saturated when it can charge more electrons. We call it the full wall capacity. When a pixel exceeds its full wall capacity, the image of a point source blooms as a result of charge leaking into surrounding pixels. 
Between all the silicon sensors, there is a light shield preventing crosstalk. This metal pattern insulation is expensive to manufacture and reduces field factor of the concerned pixel. The quantum film field factor due to fast light absorbing doesn't need metal light shield. In this way, dynamic range is larger. Finally, the electronic shutter can be implemented on any CMOS circuit. In 2015, Envisage released a sensor called Quantum 13, whose aim is to be integrated into smartphones using quantum dots in these thinner and more efficient sensors. It is legitimate to introduce the electronic global shutter into this technology. Quantum film was used for the first time in a shoot last year. The short clips from the movie confirm that it has a strong position in the next year imagery industry. The dynamic range and color response is not far from what you can get with the professional cinema equipment. In a nutshell, there are two main options where integrating quantum dots is really convenient. The first use case might be implementing the sensor on small or portable devices, such as smartphones. It can help increase resolution of little sensors, keeping the same exposure characteristic, or just increasing sensitivity with the same density sensors. The second meaningful integration might be on cinema cameras, which often still use CCD. The aim is to keep exposure latitude, great color response, and be able to shutter at higher rates. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.